Hey, how's it going guys? I hope that this video finds you well as always. Uh, in this video, we are going to be discussing transport in plants. Basically, we want to learn what xylem and phloem are. And we're going to be discussing how it is that plants basically transport nutrients and water uh, all the way from the roots through the shoots and to the leaves of the plant. So uh, let's get right into it. Uh, the objective for this specific topic is that students will be able to describe the interactions that occur among systems that perform the function of transport, reproduction, and response in plants. Now, the reason why I put this one as red is because we're only going to focus on transport in this video. We're going to talk about the systems that perform the function of transport in plants. Uh, later on, perhaps we will discuss, or in another video, we'll discuss reproduction in plants, and we also will discuss response in plants. But for this video, only we're going to focus on transport. So what is the essential question? Make sure that you write this down on your paper, please. It is, can I describe the pathway of the reactants and products for photosynthesis in plants? And we're going to learn what the reactants and the products for photosynthesis are in this video, but we're going to be talking a little bit more about this uh, on a later um, date, okay? Now, let's get right into it. Uh, the importance of transport. Uh, photosynthesis is one of the main things why transporting plants is very important or the transport of molecules around the plants is important is because photosynthesis is going to use raw materials to produce food for the plant and those raw materials come in the form of carbon dioxide this is what I mean by raw material carbon dioxide from the atmosphere water from the soil perhaps and sunlight from obviously the Sun and that's going to produce sugar and this sugar is actually we know that this is in the form of glucose okay and you should know that glucose is a carbohydrate. So these plants are going to be making sugar and they're also going to be making oxygen. So these are what we call the reactants right here. The carbon dioxide and the water will be the raw products of reactant. And right here we have the products which are the sugar and the oxygen. So the idea of transporting plants is, well, how it is that plants are going to get that CO2 from the atmosphere? Well, how it is that plants are going to get that water? From the soil and how it is that they're going to get that sunlight from the sun uh, what are they going to do with that sugar that they make or how it is that they release that uh, oxygen that they make these are all questions that I want you to think about as we go over these notes okay so the reactants must enter or be transported through the leaves um, a little bit more says products must be transported uh, around or exited from the plants and then it says oxygen must be released, glucose must be transported to the plant cells uh, for use or stored for later. And that's one thing that plant cells like to do. They like to produce that glucose, and most of the times they're actually going to store it for later. Okay? So uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. It says that uh, transporting plants involves both the root and the shoot system. So these are actually two systems in plants that we need to make sure that we understand the difference of. This is very simple, but sometimes people tend to not know about this. Anything that is above the ground, okay, that's what we're going to call the shoot system, all right? And obviously, anything that is below the ground is what we're going to call the root system, okay? So when plants are going to transport water, what happens is, when well, you should understand that water is going to travel through the roots all the way out to the shoots, and eventually it's going to travel up to the leaves. All right, and these are two systems that you need to know in plants. Now, this is the introduction of two different words that you need to know. The words xylem and the word phloem. And these things are basically specialized tissues or vascular tissues that are going to basically act as a highway to carry materials between the roots and the shoots. Um, if you want to compare these to something else that perhaps you're more familiarized with, think about it as veins and arteries, okay? Your veins and your arteries are going to transport blood uh, and different nutrients throughout your body. Well, the phloem and the xylem are exactly those um, vascular tissues for plants. And these are the ones that are going to transport those um, uh, water molecules and different um, molecules uh, from the roots all the way up to the shoots and sometimes vice versa. So how the substances travel through the plants a little more, it says that water is pulled and um, uh, pushed and pulled through the xylem. And there's one thing that you need to remember that 
uh, xylems are going to be responsible for transporting water. Uh, number one here says that water enters through the root hairs from the soil by osmosis. There is a higher concentration, um, obviously, of water in the soil than there is in the root hair. And we're gonna I'm going to explain a little bit more how this works uh, in a little bit. But you should know that this happens through osmosis. Um, one thing that plants like to use is the property of water that is called adhesion. And basically adhesion means that water molecules stick to the side of the xylem. So probably seen this before, but actually water molecules, they like to stick to different things. I mean, if you look on, um, I don't know, if it's raining and you look on the glass, you actually can see droplets of water sticking to the glass. Although sometimes they're going to run down the glass and that is obviously because they get too heavy and they run down the glass. But for the most part, if they're not heavy enough, you're going to see that they stick to the glass. If you put a drop of water in your finger and the drop of water is small enough, you will see that the drop of water kind of sticks to your finger. And that is because of the property that we call adhesion. It is that water molecules actually stick to different surfaces due to the properties that they have. And uh, obviously plants are going to use that property to make it stick to the sides of the xylem. Uh, another property that I like to use is the property of cohesion. And cohesion basically means when water molecules like to stick to each other. Obviously, to form a droplet of water, you need perhaps millions of uh, water molecules to stick to one another, or billion of water molecules to stick to one another so that they can form that droplet of, droplet of water. So water molecules actually like to stick to one another uh, and that's another property that plants are actually going to use to their advantage in order to transport water from the roots all the way up to the shoots and uh, the uh, leaves. So transpiration, which basically is the process of uh, transport of water from the roots up to the leaves, uh, says here that it, the plants are going to actually lose 90% of the water that is taken through the roots. Uh, as water vapor. So when you think about this, a lot of the water the plants are actually going to be taken in uh, through the process of transpiration, well 90% of it will be lost as water vapor uh, at one point or another through the uh, leaves of the plants. So uh, a little bit about the difference between the xylem and the phloem vessels or tissues. Well, the, What you need to understand from these two is that First of all, the xylems are going to be responsible for transporting only water, okay? And I want you to remember this. Xylems only transport water from the roots to the leaves, all right? And it only goes in one direction. Now, the thing about the phloem is that it actually transports materials up and also down. It can go from the root to the leaves or from the leaves down to the roots. Okay, and most of the times what it's going to be transporting is that food that plants make. It's that glucose that plants are going to be make. So sugar transport movement of food through the phloem. You need to remember that the phloem is responsible for transporting uh, foods or other materials like carbohydrates and glucose that the plant is making. And that's what the, uh, the phloem is for. So water movement in vascular uh, plants. Well, you need to know a couple of things here, and it's that the root hair increases surface area for absorption of water. The reason why plants have a lot of roots is because the more roots that they have, obviously, the easier it will be to absorb more and more and more water. So oftentimes, you see all of these little hairs that the plant's uh, roots are going to have, and that's so that they can increase their surface area. And the water molecules are actually going to travel into these um, hairs into the root hairs and then they're going to move up through the xylems of the plants okay and again they use this and they use the process of osmosis to transport that water there's more molecules of water outside than there's inside the cell so water molecules want to move into the cell okay remember that for this specific type there's no whoops i can really write with this energy required by the plant in order to move those molecules into the root hair. So with that in mind, I want you to think about this question. What is the movement of, uh, is the movement of water into the root hairs active or passive transport? So what do you think? Is it active or passive and why? All right? Now, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the 
uh, leaves and leaves are basically considered organs for the plants and they are specialized for photosynthesis. So all of the different um, materials that are required for photosynthesis are actually going to be used in the leaves. Uh, things like carbon dioxide is going to be absorbed from the air. Uh, things like water is going to be coming in through from the roots into the leaf. Things like energy from the sun or the sunlight is going to be absorbed through the leaf as well. And that's all going to be used inside of the leaf, inside of the chloroplast that you, the, the plants are going to have or inside of the cells. And that's where photosynthesis will basically take place. It's all going to be taking place inside of the uh, leaves. Only leaves are going to do photosynthesis for plants. So why would a leaf uh, be considered an organ? And when you think about or a levels of organization, so going from the atom all the way to perhaps organism. When you think about those levels of organization, anything that's in between them, when you think about them, uh, if not do a little bit of research so you can find what they are if you don't remember them, uh, but you should remember what they are. Why would you consider a leaf an organ in the first place? So uh, this one is basically about the internal tissue of the leaf. If this is actually a cross section of the leaf, if you were to have a leaf, and kind of cut it in half. This is just going to make my best drawing of a leaf here. If you kind of have a leaf here and you cut it in half like that, well, if you look at just this side right here, right, the inner side of the leaf, this is kind of why, what it's going to look like, that thin part of the plant. There's a lot that is going on there. So, for example, something that I want you to remember is that there's a, something called a cuticle part of the plant, which is kind of like a waxy cover. I'm not going to make you remember all of this or memorize them, but some of the ones that I want you to remember are the ones in red, like the xylem, which are basically those structures that move water. The phloem are basically those that move glucose, which are those. Um, and then the other one that I want you to remember is guard cells, which we're going to cover on the next slide. And the guard cells look like these structures that you see right here. Okay, so those are going to be guard cells. All right, so a little bit about the cuticle uh, layer of the plant, and that is basically on the leaves, you have this thing called cuticle, which is a waxy covering on top of the leaf that helps prevent water loss. So like I said, 90% of the water will be lost to the environment, but plants actually try to prevent this from happening by having this cuticle layer of um, basically kind of like skin that will allow it to prevent uh, water loss. Uh, now, how do plants uh, keep a balance of water? And the way that they keep the balance of water is through the stomata and gar cells, who basically are going to regulate water loss uh, in the cell uh, or inside the leaf. Now, when there is a loss of water, this is what the gar cells are going to do. Well, they will uh, appear as swollen, and what's going to happen is that this will create an opening that is called a stomata. Uh, and this is actually created because there's a lot of water pressure between the two uh, cells. And I'll show you a picture so it makes more sense on the next slide. Um, the next thing says that when there is less water, the guard cells will collapse or shrink and the stoma will appear closed. So this will obviously prevent excess water from evaporating. Now let me show you what that looks like so it make, makes more sense. This is what it looks like when uh, the plants or the leaves have too much water. Okay, the guard cells swell, and so the stoma will appear open like this, this opening in here, and a lot of water will evaporate through it so that the, uh, the plant can lose water that it doesn't need. Now, what happens when the plant doesn't have enough water? Well, the stoma will not be visible because the guard cells will actually shrink and collapse upon each other so that the stoma appear closed. And that is basically how plants kind of prevent water from uh, or maintain uh, water inside of themselves. Okay, inside of those leaves. I'm going to skip that question because we haven't talked about this yet. But uh, the next thing is food storage. And it is uh, many plants convert excess glucose into starch and stored in specialized stems for later use. So this is actually some things that plants do. You know, many of the vegetables and uh, fruits and roots that we eat, these are actually, you know, excess glucose that plants make and they just store for later use, but it never really gets used by the plant. Okay. Now, how do they make? Well, they make glucose, and they, I said that they store it as a form of starch. So this is what starch looks like, and this is what glucose looks like. Glucose is mostly a monomer for that carbohydrate, and this is what starch looks like. What is the difference between glucose and starch? Well, starch is a polymer made of many glucose molecules. All right. 
Now, I'm going to basically stop here because I'm going to ask you to answer the questions on the assignment that you have. But think about this picture for that.